It's not something I've done a lot of. There's only really this guy. So this is gonna be a real challenge. Especially when the instructions look like this. It was a real what the f moment until I realized they were telling you how to paint the thing and it happened again. What the f Absolutely no chance that I'm following painting instructions with what I have in mind. So I settled down for an hour or so. I worked on trying to build the basic chassis. I knew this model would come with the sort of standard VW Beetle wheels, and that's not what I need. So I've already 3D printed some bigger wheels and some smaller ones, which I rescued from an STL model of an orc truck, which I managed to find free on the internet somewhere. What's in my mind is something much more like this. After a quick five minutes on the computer, I felt like I had a plan. My absolute favourite thing about American culture is hot rods. The furthest we go in this country is in your early 20s, you add some bodywork and some stickers that do absolutely f*** all to the performance of your Ford Fiesta. So this is my opportunity for some chopping and some sectioning. First of all, what I'm calling the cab needs to come off from the body. Next, I needed to remove the back window, but I also needed to take a small section out of the back end of the body so that I could shorten the wheelbase. Because I had shortened the wheelbase, I needed to do the same thing to the chassis which was a bit more complicated than I would have liked, but with some jiggery-pokery, we got there in the end. The next job was to cut a hole for this Lego air scoop. I also needed to chop the doors and the roof to complete the look. And after everything was roughly taped back together, we look like this. It's rough, but it's definitely got the vibe I'm looking for. Let me show you what we've got. We have the sections roof, got the back end. We've got a couple of orcs that I made up out of spares and some 3D printed parts. And yes, I know the driver's side right arm is a bit too big, but that won't be noticeable in the final product. We have the front end with the chopped doors and the chassis I've already glued together. I've used a spare part on the inside of the chassis just to help hold everything a bit more firmly. And underneath the actual floor panels, I've used some of the sprues from the VW kit to raise the floor up so that the orcs actually fit inside the vehicle with the faces and the arms at the right heights correlating with the windows. I have come to the realization that I'm going to have to paint this thing as I build it. Because if I build it, there's just no way that I can paint the orcs or the inside of the truck. It's just made the build a whole lot more complicated. So with my homemade painting handles and some double-sided carpet tape, I'm taking the orcs off for a prime. Which left me with only one thing to do. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know I hate sanding. But if it's your first time here, well, welcome. And I hope you enjoy what I build and how I put these videos together. This was a tedious task, but luckily, if you listen carefully in the background, you'll hear town Nick keeping me company with one of Play On's battle reports. When the orcs came back from priming, I was pleasantly surprised. I will never profess to being the greatest of mini painters, but for this particular project, these will do. 
And I found this little guy in my bitch box and he's definitely going to be added somewhere. The next part of this project was reassembly. This wasn't easy. Using blue tack and masking tape, I taped the bonnet of the cab. Bonnet. Who's going to know what a bonnet is, I'm pretty sure in the UK. I stuck the front end of the cab in the place that it needs to be glued into. This is because I'm going to use this as the starting point for attaching everything else back together. I'm trying to get everything to line up just perfectly so that I can rebuild the actual cab section of this model and then attach that to the chassis. The way I'm doing that is I'm gluing individual pieces of offcuts on the inside of the model where I know it won't be seen and it will give me a really nice, strong, firm bond. We rinse and repeat that process a few times and then this gets even harder. Now we've got to do the roof. This was tricky. It involved having to clamp the roof pieces to the actual cab and then clamping the roof pieces together and lifting the roof away from the cab so I could turn both those pieces into one. This actually took me several attempts. But after trying my patience no end, and actually I took a half an hour break and came back to it, I managed to get both parts into position to a satisfactory standard, got them glued together, and set them aside to let them cure properly. Next up is Milliput, and we're going to use it to fill in all these unsightly gaps. Once it's well mixed, we're going to roll it into sausages. First you gotta do the truffle shuffle. Come on! And you use those to fill the gaps. And then smooth the whole thing out with some water. Set it aside and let it cure. Once it's had a quick going over with some sandpaper, it's time for some gravies. I've already picked these out from my Orcs bit box, but I really am just making it up as I go along. And once I had cut and stuck, including a load of rivets, everything to the body, I took it outside for a prime. After blasting it with some gunmetal silver through an airbrush, painting the driver's seat and a few of the details on the engine, I stuck what I could together and we looked like this. So far, so good. Back to Milliput again. Mix, sausage. But this time, I'm filling in the gaps from where I removed the front fenders. And after these parts were painted that same gunmetal silver, broke out the yellow paint. I knew this thing would need some kind of wrecking ball, but I didn't know how to build one and I certainly wasn't going to 3D print a whole arm and wrecking ball. So I built a torpedo version. I also wanted to continue the hot rod idea or theme with something like this, but my current skill set didn't allow for that and I just ended up in a mess. So I simplified the entire idea and drawing it on with a black acrylic marker proved far easier than my previous attempt. I knew at some point I was going to have to switch focus and build a bed for this truck. Now luckily, I actually had this box of extra long matches lying around and the inside of that proved to be a really good fit for what I needed to do next.
Using the measurements from the matchbox, I built myself a bed. These white pieces, these are all styrene or plastic hard. The rivets, they've been made from a, a butter lid top, butter top lid. These side panels, well, those are spare parts from a blaster jet. The front of the bed, well, that's spares from a predator. And the mesh that you can see, well, that's actually bonsai netting. It's used in the bottom of bonsai parts to actually keep the soil in place. After priming, the bed was dry brushed silver, then very roughly kind of painted black again, then dry brushed silver again to give it a worn metallic look. Attaching the bed to the truck was proving to be quite a tricky thing because there's literally nothing there for me to glue it to. The original back seat and a piece of plastic card is the only answer I had. Lots and lots of super glue combined with lots and lots of baking powder was the order of the day. With the card and the seat in position, it's time for more glue and to find out whether this actually works or not. I added some barrels and some extra details, mainly these two at the bottom as fuel tanks and this what I'm calling a grab bar, so as the truck flies by, the autos can grab on and get themselves inside. After each painting phase, I do go outside and I do spray the entire model in some varnish, so you get some weird things happening when you start to add some washes. But the way I apply these is I just slap them on and then pull them off with a cotton bud. And then after adding a few highlights, I decided I'd had enough and called it done. I've got to admit, I'm really quite pleased with this. It's turned out pretty cool. It's not perfect, but it's an old truck. It doesn't need to be. It's a little bit longer than an old truck should be, but the wheelbase is the same as a Rhino. It might not be completely tabletop legal, but there's a big shooter, there's a wrecking ball, there's enough room for a couple of models in the bed. I cannot wait to...